What a strange way to start worship this morning with the Zoom servers not working and us going in and out and trying to figure out how to connect with each other. I think it is really interesting that in the Acts reading, one of the things that Peter talks about as he is preaching to the people in the Archipolis is he says, God does not live in shrines made by human hands. And so I want to invite us today to go into that passage in Acts a little bit and to think about shrines made by human hands. We deeply love our church buildings. I deeply love our church building. I had just started getting used to all of the things about the sanctuary before we were not allowed to worship there anymore during the pandemic. I love the stained glass. I love the Stations of the Cross. I honestly even love y'all's light fixtures. Um, you have these beautiful circles and there's little crosses in them. Um, for those of you who may not have ever looked at the light fixtures in the sanctuary before, but I love that there are gold crosses built into all of the light fixtures and we are worshiping under the cross. And um, that just makes my day in that sanctuary. We love our buildings. We love our shrines. We sometimes, and the church taught for many years, that that is where God's, God lives, that that is the home of God. And it is certainly true that we deeply love our buildings and we love our communities. Great things happened in our buildings. I just heard a story, I believe, about chocolate covered marshmallows getting thrown around the youth room at one point. Great things happen in our buildings. We learn to love Jesus. We learn to love each other. We learn to be the gathered community of God. And so it's not that our buildings are bad. It's not that loving our buildings are bad. It's not that appreciating the community and the love and the joy and the hope and the special things about our building don't matter. The trick is when we love our buildings more than we love Jesus. The trick is when we love our buildings, when we have made a shrine, and when we start worshiping the building and worshiping the altar made of stone more than we're worshiping Jesus and God. One of the things our bishop keeps saying is the church has left the building and it's great. Lots of people are coming to church these days who were not coming to church before the pandemic. Lots of people are looking forward to hearing about Jesus these days who were not looking forward to it before the pandemic. One of the really interesting conversations is that going on is that some people say that online worship is inaccessible for some people, and that is absolutely true. The thing that we forget, though, is sometimes our buildings are inaccessible for people. Sometimes sitting on a hard pew and having to sit up for an entire hour or hour and a half is inaccessible for people. Sometimes people don't drive. Sometimes people can't afford gas. Sometimes people don't have the energy to get up and put on nice clothes and show up at church. Every way that we can possibly worship Every shrine that we make to God eventually provides barriers for some group of people. There are always some people for whom the way that we do things isn't going to work and the way that we do things isn't going to be the way that works for them and the way that we do things is not the way that they are going to come to know Jesus. There are barriers to everything. Now, some people will say that this means we should stop doing everything. 
that because there are barriers in some areas of life for everybody participating, we should not do anything. I don't think that is what Peter means when he's preaching at the Archipolis and saying that God does not live in shrines of human hands. And I don't think that's what Jesus is inviting us to when Jesus promises to send us the advocates. In our passage from John, Jesus knows that he's going away. And Jesus promises to send the advocate, the Holy Spirit, which we will celebrate with the marshmallows on May 31st. So make sure you bring them to worship on that day. And so we have the Holy Spirit. So here's what's super interesting about what Peter does. He shows up at the shrine in front of a bunch of people who are pagans and worship uh, gods of their city states. And he shows up and he says, you all already know how to find Jesus. You all already worship this shrine to an unknown God, but let me tell you, this God you think is unknown is actually unknown. And I know this God, and I know this God who came to earth to experience human life and was killed. God brought back to life to offer us salvation and life and to forgive our sins and to offer us eternal life. And this is amazing. And this is about love. So what's really interesting here is that Peter doesn't go into the Archegopolis and say, hey, y'all, y'all have it wrong. You bunch of sinners, you go into hell, like you're worshiping an unknown God. This is terrible, get over yourselves, right? That's not what, that's not what Peter says. Peter says, Hey, I notice that you already know a little bit about God. I noticed that you're already asking questions about God. I noticed that this altar says to an unknown God. And so then Peter proceeds to say, hey, so let me tell you about this God that you don't know that I do. Let me start where you are. Let me meet you where you are. That's where Peter meets the people. He meets the people in the place that they are. And so it's interesting that the place that people are looking for faith right now is online. And so we have an incredible opportunity to be disciples. We have an incredible opportunity right now to meet people where they are, which is online. And let's be real. The world has been online a whole lot longer than the church has been online. So what happens if we as disciples of Jesus start showing up in online places and being like, hey, I heard that you're looking for Jesus. Or hey, I heard that you're feeling really anxious about the pandemic. Let me tell you about this guy, Jesus, and you can pray to him. And when I pray to Jesus, I feel a little bit calmer or I feel more grounded or I feel sure that no matter what happens, Jesus is going to be with us through it and give us what we need to get through it. What happens when we model our discipleship after Peter? What happens when we show up in the places where people are seeking Jesus, the places where people are seeking comfort, the places where people are seeking answers and community and unconditional love, and we say, hey, I noticed you're looking for love. I know this guy, Jesus, and he is all about love. It's great that you're looking. Let me tell you some things about Jesus. And the really cool thing about that is once you look at the John reading, you see that Jesus sends us the advocate. Jesus sends us the spirit. We don't even have to know what to say. Peter, it's not like he sat, you know, like pastors do and spent a whole week writing this sermon that he's giving in front of the Archegopolis and in front of this shrine and in front of this temple. He shows up and he says what Jesus invited him to say. And so I wonder if we're at a really interesting invitation point in life right now. I wonder if we're at a really 
really interesting invitation point in the church right now. We are being invited to let go of our human shines, to let go of maybe our buildings for a while, to let go of the ways we normally worship, to let go of being in control about whether I can come to worship or not, because we're now trusting these Zoom servers, which may be our shrines or maybe not, uh, to get us connected to worship. And so we've lost a little control over how we do things and when we do things. And yet Jesus is with us. And yet Jesus has sent us the advocate. And so I want to invite you in your own home with your microphones on mute to practice saying one sentence, only one sentence. I'm not going to ask you to preach a whole thing like Peter did, or like um, Peter did in front of the temple, in front of the shrine. But I want to invite you to think right now and say out loud, one thing you believe about Jesus. And the interesting thing is that if it's really only one sentence, you can type it. You can type it on Twitter. You can type it on Facebook. You can text it to other people. You can put it in a Zoom chat. You can call up other people on the phone and say this one sentence to them. So let's say I will even give you an example. We're going to role play discipleship a little bit here because we are being invited into an incredible resurgence of discipleship. So let's say that I am really upset that I could not figure out how to make Zoom work this morning because of the technological difficulties. Let's say that I am sitting at home crying and angry because I couldn't get into worship. What is one sentence you can say to me about Jesus that meets me where I am and invites me to know a Jesus of love, that invites me to know a Jesus of hope? That invites me to know that even if I can't always be where I want to be or engage in worship exactly the way I want to, that Jesus is still with me. What would you say to me? So I'm going to pause for a moment and I'm going to wait till I see everybody's mouths moving. So I want everybody to say one sentence out loud about Jesus. If you want to share your sentence, you may share it in the chat. Chats don't appear in online when we uh, download them and then upload them to YouTube. Um, you may share your one sentence in the chat if you would like to, um, but I'm going to just pause for a minute until I see everybody's mouths moving. What would you say to me? We might not always know exactly everything. We might not always know where we're gonna show up and where we're gonna end up running into other people. We might run into them in our shrines or we might run into them outside of our shrines. But here's the thing, Peter gives us a great example of being disciples that allows us and invites us to do what he did and meet people where they are. And Jesus sent us the advocate to give us all that we need to invite others into a life of unconditional love and faith and hope and salvation. Thanks be to God that we are called to be disciples and that we have a God who created us, a Jesus who saves us, and an advocate who inspires us. Amen.